Welcome to Modern Word Ministries. I'm Deacon Tom Moore, and on behalf of my wife Kim and myself, we want to welcome you. And just to let you know that whether you're here in person or you're tuning in on social media, we appreciate that you have chosen to spend a little bit of your day with us. Before we get to this week's message, just a couple of quick things I'd like to cover. You know, we have an amazing website, and everything you want to do with us and we want to do with you can be found there. You can get on our prayer list on the website, you can do your tithes and offerings over the website, or you can communicate with us. I love feedback, my wife loves feedback. Tell us how we're doing, tell us what you need, tell us what you're looking for in your church, because this is your church. I shepherd this church, but it's your church. So before we start with the message, just a couple of things. First, if you're in need of prayer, or if you know someone who's in need of prayer, Go to our website at modernwordministries.org and put in a prayer request. It's very simple to follow. We will get back to you within 48 hours. It's all anonymous. It's confidential. And we will get back to you. I promise you that. We will put you on the prayer list and we will pray for you every single day because that's what we do because we're a praying church. Secondly, tithes and offering. You know, an important part of being a Christian is giving your tithes and offerings to the Lord. And there are a number of scriptures that tell us why that is so important. But I'm here to tell you, we have made this so easy, so simple. Just go to our website and click on the tab that says support this ministry. It'll take you from there. It's so easy, even I could do it. So again, thanks for coming out today. And now here's this week's message. Good morning. I'm Deacon T, and I'll be bringing you the Word of God today. Welcome to Modern Word Ministries. This week's message is called, Ignorance Can Cost You Your Life. And what this is about this week is really about us, me, you, people in the Bible, who ignore the calling on their life, maybe take the calling on their life for granted, maybe don't realize how important it is to live out your calling, maybe don't realize what the potential ramifications are of not living out your calling, and, and really it's a story Uh, that I think you and I can relate to that is really about some of the saddest things that have ever happened. And they happen every day to believers like you and me. We get off track. We begin to take life for granted. We begin to take our gifts for granted. We begin to take everything that makes us who we are for granted. This isn't in some big, overt way. It's little, and it's subtle, and it's slow. And the longer you've been great, the longer you've been blessed, the longer you've been, if you will, anointed, the more chance there is that potentially we will get a little calloused, potentially get a little um, uh, too comfortable, if you will. And it can result literally, in the loss of our life, our spiritual life, in some cases, our physical life. We're not going to be here uh, too long today, but I I wanted to talk to you first about one of my favorite guys in the Bible. And he's one of my favorite guys because this is the story of how ignorance and ego and how being so blessed can actually become a burden if you lose your bearing, if you lose your compass, if you lose your intellect, and if you just become ignorant to what's going on around you, that it can literally cost you your life. Now, this is a very, very well-known story. I'm not going to read miles of scripture. I'm just going to talk about this story quickly 
everyone knows this story, but there are two lines in here in this scripture that I'm going to uh, bring out be because they are, um, I, I really never saw them before. And uh, many times as I've read this scripture and preached on this scripture, I, I never saw these two lines and I never saw them in this context before. In Judges, it talks about our boy Samson. We all know the story of Samson. I'm not going to tell the story. We all know that Samson was, you know, blessed from conception. He was a Nazarite. He never shaved. He practiced religious uh, uh, um, control and, and containment. And, and he was a holy man from before birth. And he's one of only two people in the Bible that are called out in that way. We know what happened. He started messing around with Delilah. Uh, next thing you know, she tricked him, and he was stupid. And, you know, she cut his hair, and he lost his strength. And he ended up losing his life. They blinded him. They made him a slave. In the end, you know, he recovered some of his strength, and he ended up killing more of these Philistines than he even did when he was able-bodied. But there is some language in this section of Judges 16 that just really shook me to my core. After Samson has, if you will, teased Delilah about, oh, it's these reeds, and oh, it's this, and oh, it's that, that's where my strength is, and she just played on him because he was making her look like a fool to her people. He finally told her the truth that his strength was in his hair. And when he fell asleep, she cut all his hair off and he didn't have any strength. And when we get to Judges 16, um, up around um, 19, it says this. And then I'm, I'm going to call out the part that really, really got my attention. So Judges 16, verse 19 to 21 or something. 19, she, that's Delilah, made him sleep on her knees. So you can picture this. He's laying there, got his head on her lap. She's stroking his head. He gets all comfy and cozy. She made him sleep on her knees and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Now, this is because he has finally confided in her where his strength comes from. Now, these are the, the following couple sentences are what I want you to hear. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson! And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. So what had happened, in case you don't remember, is the three times prior to this, Samson had fallen asleep, and but he had given her some phony information about where her strength was. And so she would do things to him, and then he would wake up and go, Oh, just kidding. Oh, gee, let me see what happened. And then he would kill all of her people. So she kept three times bringing in more people, and he kept faking like he was weak, and then he would kill them all. But this time, according to the Bible, she began to torment him after they cut his hair, and his strength left him. And she said, wake up, wake up. The Philistines are upon you. She's playing with him. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. That's what he had done every other time. But get ready. And here's the part of this entire scripture I want you to hear. This is the part I hadn't seen like this before. And this could be maybe the most tragic sentence or one of them in the whole Bible. I'm talking about Samson. But he did not know 
that the Lord had left him. Oh, he did not know that the Lord had left him. This is a guy who's been a prophet and anointed before birth. This is a guy who got too full of himself and his own power. This is a guy who was playing with the devil. Uh, uh, word of advice, don't play with the devil. Uh, teasy, teasy, tinker, tinker, play, play. No, you don't prod the bear. You don't poke a pit bull. You're going to get bit. Why are you going to get bit? Because that's what dogs do. Dogs bite you. This woman was a dog. And now she's biting him. But he's so far off from being under the will and doing God's work. He's so far off that this man who has been consecrated before he was conceived did not know that the Lord had left him. Oh my goodness. I hope I never am so far out there that I don't even know that God's not with me anymore. That I've gotten so far off track. I've gone so far off the rails that God isn't with me and I don't even know that. I'm walking around without my protector. This is horrible, horrible line in the scripture. He didn't realize that the Lord had left him. My friends, if the Lord leaves you, that's horrid. But if you don't realize the Lord has left you, do you understand you're walking around spiritually naked without any protection, without any armor, without any spear, without any protection of any kind, you are exposed spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, in every sense of the word. When God has left you, you in trouble. But when God has left you and you don't realize it, you really in trouble because you running around and are stupid. You don't even know. You so ignorant. Because you're so caught up, the ignorance can cost you your life. If you don't believe me, ask Samson. Oh, you can't ask Samson. Why? Because he died. Why did he die? He died because the Lord had left him and he didn't even know it. Well, that's weird, Deacon T. Why did God leave him? Because he kept turning his back on God. Now, God was still out there, but God wanted him to, to find out what happens when you turn your back on God and on the gifts that God has given you. Not me, not her, not him. You, Samson, playing with the devil, messing around with those dogs, messing around with that crazy pit bull. You see, you think you're too smart. You think you're too clever. You think you're untouchable. You think you're invincible. Never. The only thing, <coughs> excuse me, the only thing that made Samson Samson was God. So when God left him, he wasn't Samson. He just some dude about to get blinded, become a slave, and put to death. That's right. So if it could happen to Samson, who was anointed before birth, if it can happen to him, it could happen to you. It can happen to me. My prayer for myself, my family, and all of you is that God never leave me and that if I'm so far out there that 
God doesn't know me, that at least I'll recognize that and very quickly turn myself around. You, you can't do it. You can't do it. Now, now I had this scripture up a few weeks ago for, for a, different, a, a different message. But I'm going to use it today because I want to tie this back. Because our title is Ignorance Can Cost You Your Life. I, I don't, I say, I say this often, but I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe the Word of God. And when I say this is from the Word of God, I mean literally it's, I make copies of the Scripture right out of the Bible. When I say this is what I think or what I believe, well, then it's my opinion. It's not out of the Bible. It's just based on what I've read or what I've seen or what I've heard or what God has inspired me to believe. But in Hosea 4 and 6, and if you follow us every week or you were here every week, you will remember this scripture, Hosea, one of the minor prophets. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I rejected you from being a priest to me. Woo. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. Ooh. I will change their glory into shame. Mm. Mm. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They shall eat but not be satisfied. They shall play the whore but not multiply because they have forsaken the Lord to cherish whoredom, wine, and new wine, which take away the understanding. My friends, my people, we need to hear the Word of God today. Ignorance can cost you your life. Ignorance can cost you your family. Ignorance can cost you everything. I'm talking about spiritual ignorance. I'm talking about ignorance of the will and the plan of God in your life. I'm talking about ignoring your destiny, ignoring what was manifested in you by God. This dude, Samson, was for real, for real, a prophet, a teacher, an example, a man of God who got so far off, so far out of whack that God had left him and he did not know it. How can that be? It's the power of the devil. It's the power of sin. It's the power of ignorance. It's the power of closing your eyes and pretending that you're God. Or that because you have gifts, that you somehow created the gifts. Or because you how somehow have something that is very desirable, that that is because innately you're just better, smarter, cuter, whatever, more deserving. You aren't. You aren't. It's all because God loved you enough. He gave you all this stuff. You did nothing to deserve your life here. Samson did nothing to deserve to be Samson. And guess what? He treated it as such. He did not treat it as cherished treasure. He was very cavalier with his gift. He was very cavalier with his spirit. He was very cavalier in the way he lived amongst non-believers. He had no business being with these people. But his ignorance, and particularly when I say ignorance now, I'm talking about ignorance to your own shortcomings. I'm talking about ignorance not in a worldly sense, but ignorance ignorance as to who you really are and who you're supposed to be and ignorance to how am I really living and being intellectually honest with yourself. 
How crazy is it to lie to yourself so badly that it costs you your life? Wow. How bad is it that you ignore your gifts, your blessings, that you turn your back on your anointing so terribly that God has left you and you don't even know it? You didn't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit leaving you? Anyone who's been baptized, who's been born again, anyone who has received the gift of the Holy Spirit knows what it felt like when the gift came on them, whether they spoke in tongues, whether they interpreted tongues, whether they were teachers, whether they were preachers, whether they were evangelists, whether they were prophets, whether they were healers, diviners of the word, it doesn't make any difference. Whatever your gift was, if suddenly you're in a dry well situation, wake up. Wake up. Your ignorance is costing you your life. Do you not realize that the reason you're in this dry situation, do you know why you're there? Because you're living a dry life. A dry spiritual life will result in dryness. That's how it is. This guy, Samson, he, he did everything but mock God openly. And he really was. He was mocking his gift around a bunch of non-believers. So he wasn't even around Christians or God's people and acting the fool. He was over amongst the devil's camp, acting the fool. What kind of moron must you be? And the answer is a really good one. A really good moron who is so caught up in himself that he can't even see that he's alone. That he's alone. The God has done the harshest thing he could do, and that is departed from your presence. I don't have to tell you, you need God in your life. Come on. I don't have to tell you that without God, there is no life. I don't have to tell you that if you're living and you're not living a godly life, things are not going to go well. I don't need to tell you that. I don't need to read you Samson or any number of other scriptures. But what I'm hoping you do is that you hear me now and you never say, Deacon T, I didn't even know that the Lord had left me. I was out here alone, spiritually naked, and didn't even know it. I screwed up so bad. I turned my back so hard. I got so comfortable with non-godlike behavior, whatever it is. I don't care if, well, if you're a mass murderer or, or you're a, a, a drug addict or you're just a hater. No matter if it's what the sin is, no matter if it's what the behavior is, when you are so full of yourself that you think nothing can touch you, you're about to get jacked up. God loves obedience. God loves sacrifice. God loves our heart, if we have a heart toward him. When you got a heart about yourself and a heart about consumption and a heart about, oh, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, oh, did I tell you how wonderful I am and how charming I am and how handsome I am and how smart I am and how rich I am. And I didn't yeah? And how did you get all those things? Here's how you didn't get them. You didn't get them because of yourself or anything that you did. Yes, yes, you may have worked hard. Yes, you may have this. But all of it comes from God. And in the same way, because God gives it all, trust me, brothers and sisters, God can take it all away. If you don't believe me, ask blind and then dead, Mr. Samson the slave, not Samson the big cheese. 
people spitting on him, making fun of him, gouging his eyes out, making him be a, a, a trick pony and showing off his strength. This is what he had been reduced to because of his own ignorance, his own stupidity, his own lack of integrity, his own lack of moral compass, basically being so full of himself. That's right. That's right. I don't care how gifted you are or what your gift is. If you do not recognize and acknowledge that all things come from God and that without him you have nothing, you will be nothing, you, you are nothing, then I'm going to say this. Be prepared to be blinded be prepared to be a slave to the sin. Be prepared to be deaf to the sin. You see, the only way to live is to live with God. The devil isn't going to protect you. The devil wants you to die miserably and not achieve your potential and not do what it is that God called you out to do. Believe me, it was a happy day when the devil said, Hey, this guy, Samson. This guy, Samson, he is off the rails. Oh, the devil was dancing. Now nah, he pulled himself back in because Samson, no pun intended, saw the light. And in the end, of course, killed all these non-believers. But that's not the point. He could have done that and more. We have no idea what his potential was. Because unfortunately, he was blinded and killed when perhaps he would have lived another hundred years and done who knows what. But we'll never know that, and neither will he. And the only person who knows what he could have been in his fullest potential is God. And God was sad, and God was hurt, and God was not happy that Samson was doing what Samson was doing. It's not God's will that we go down the drain. It's not God's will that our ignorance costs us our life. But we have free will, and God always respects our free will choices. Even though God knew that Samson was going to do all this before he was ever born, he still let him do it. God always holds out the highest hope for us, us humans. And for the most part, we drop the ball, like, all the time. We're going to start the music. And as we do, I, I want you to just think about a couple of things. If you're with me on this, and you believe, and you acknowledge that everything you have, everything, came from God and only God. Oh, you worked hard. Oh, you tried hard. Oh, you this. Oh, you that. Oh, you were smart. You're, whoa, whoa, who do you think gave you the smarts? Who do you think gave you the work ethic? Who do you think gave you the energy to get up every day and put it out? Who, who, who do you think did all that? Right. God. God. We haven't figured out his plan. But if we get so far off course, we allow our plan to blind us to his plan. We're in deep trouble, and no pun intended, that's how you end up getting blinded and killed. What do they say? What is worse than having no sight? What is worse than having no sight? Having no vision. Right. You see, our boy Samson, he had no vision. He only saw where he was. He couldn't see where he was supposed to go. And because he was having so much earthly fun, playing around with these hoes and he, these, these uh, Delilah people, guess what? Guess what, Samson? Oh, you a big boy, all right, but now you blind, bro. Now you got your head shaved. Now you ain't so strong. Now you... Wow. Really? All that could have been avoided. 
if you'd have been listening to God instead of listening to yourself. That's my message to you. God's got you. And he's going to handle it for you. But if you get so crazy in the meantime that God treats you like he did Samson and he leaves you and you don't realize he's left you, you're not doing anything to get back into God's good graces. If you are not in God's good graces, <coughs> where are you? I'm curious. Mm. You're in the good graces of the world? You're in the good graces of Delilah? Hmm. You're in the good graces of the enemy? Hmm. Remember this. Anytime the devil is celebrating, something's wrong. Anytime you are just too happy in the physical world and you never are questioning what's up, what's next, and you're just living in the moment too much, be very, very careful. It's great to live in the moment. You can't live in the past and you can't live in the future. What do you say? We cannot change the past, only how we interpret it. We cannot control the future, only prepare for it. All we can do is live today. And what do they say? That's why they call today the present. It's a present. It's a gift that God has given to you. The question is, what are you doing with it? My people suffer from lack of knowledge. That's why they perish. I didn't say that. The Bible says that. Are you suffering? Are you perishing due to lack of knowledge? Understand that the lack of knowledge is self-inflicted. Please. That isn't something God's doing to you. You don't have knowledge because you have closed off your knowledge receptors. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your eyes. You're not reading the Bible. You're not praying. You don't have relationship with Jesus. Relationship with God. Without that, you're going to search out other relationships to fill the void that you feel. You can't not have God in your life and then tell me that there isn't a void. I don't believe that. That's my opinion. I believe that something is going to fill the void in your life. So you need to decide, is it God? Is it the enemy? Is it God? Is it dope? Is it God? Is it booze? Is it God? Is it eating? Is it God? Is it overworking? Is it God? Is it excess? Is it God? Is it excess, excess, excess? All these worldly excesses. And you're doing them all the time. We all have a moment. We all have to. Sure we do. I'm talking about when it becomes a lifestyle. I'm here to tell you this. It's unhealthy, and it will lead you to lose your spiritual life. We cannot exist without God's hand on the rudder of our life. We can't make it if God has left us. Don't believe me. Just ask Samson. Oh, you can't ask Samson. Why? Hmm. Right. So in closing, I just want to say this. It's easy to fall into like this worldly life. Taking all your skills, attributes, and all the great stuff that makes you who you are, that makes you this incredible human being. And think that that's because you're so smart and you're so cute and you're so tall and you're so this and you're so... It'd be easy to think that. 
Instead, I want you to modify that and say, thank you, Jesus. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be tall, handsome, good looking, smart, funny, whatever, successful. I wouldn't have this great relationship. I wouldn't have this, that everything comes from God and that God is our source. And that ignorance to those facts, that ignorance to that philosophy can cost you your life. Lord, we just thank you so much for giving us this time today, for bringing us out here in your presence, in your holy temple. Lord, we just ask you today to keep our eyes and ears open, to have us be always in your will and in your way, that you might never leave us, that we would always be aware that you are right here, sitting on our shoulder, holding us up. You and the Holy Spirit have got us. And that if, God forbid, we lose that perspective, that you would quickly, immediately restore us to sound thinking, restore us to sound action, restore us to appropriate behaviors, and that we would be and become all that you have destined for us to be. We ask you to do this for us, Lord, today and tomorrow and forever, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Well, amen, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here with you again this week. You can catch us every week at 10 a.m. on modernwordministries.org. You can catch us later uh, on that same website. You can also get us on YouTube at Deacon Tom Moore. All of our weekly messages are there. You know, it, it's, a, uh, it's a deep message today. But, but I think it's a message we all needed. There's so much going on in this world, and it's so easy for us to not realize that, just as it was for Samson, that God had left us, and we didn't even realize it. You know, God's going to see you through, and I'm going to pray for you. Now, those are two things you can count on. This is Modern Word Ministries, where you can come as you are, but you're never going to leave the same. So until next week, here at modernwordministries.org, I just want to say I love you, be blessed, be safe, have a beautiful week, and just remember this, ignorance can cost you your life. Bye-bye, everybody.